I can confirm we're live. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our September Army Council meeting. I'll start with the acknowledgement. We, the Greater Shepparton City Council, begin today's meeting by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land, which now comprises Greater Shepparton. We pay respect to their tribal elders, we celebrate their continuing culture, and we acknowledge the memory of their ancestors. Item number two on today's agenda is the privacy notice that I will read out. This public meeting is being streamed live via our Facebook page and made available for public access on our website along with the official minutes of this meeting. Item number three, governance principles. Council considers that the decisions contained in this agenda gives effect to the overarching governance principles stated in section 9.2 of the Local Government Act 2020. The principles are described here. They are from one to eight, and I wouldn't read them all, but they are here on the agenda. Moving on to next item, uh, apologies. Councillors, do we have any apologies to note today? Ma yes, Councillor Oswald. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to move that the apology of Councillor Patterson be noted and accepted by the Council. Thank you, Councillor Oswari. Uh, we'll now go to the vote. Those in favour? Motion carried and opposed. Thank you. Item number five, declarations of conflict of interest. Councillors, do we have any declarations of conflict of interest today with respect to the agenda item? No. No? Okay, thank you. We'll move on to item number six, confirmation of minutes of previous meetings. There's a recommendation on page seven. Do I have a mover, please? Councillor Giovinati. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I'd like to move the recommendation on page seven that the minutes of the 18th of August 2020 scheduled council meeting and the 4th of September 2020 additional council meeting as circulated be confirmed. Thank you. And do I have a seconder? Councillor Adam, thank you. Yes, thank you, Mayor. I'll second that motion. Um, Councillor Giovanetti, do you want to speak to the motion? No, thank you, Madam Mayor. Straightforward. Thank you. And Councillor Adam? No, do ditto, Madam Mayor. Mayor. Ditto. Thank you. Um, all right, so we'll now go to the vote. Those in favour? Motion carried on opposed. Thank you. Next item is public question time. Um, Mr. Harriet, do we have any public question today? We do, Madam Mayor. Uh, we have um, questions from Mr. Brendan Gostre. Okay, would you like to read out your yes. question and response? Uh, the permitted two questions are as follows. Um, question one, what has been the total cost to the 30th of July, 2020 to council for all planning and operating costs relating to the new SAM since the 1st of July, 2013. Response is Greater Shepparton City Council has spent approximately 5.5 million to the 30th of July, 2020 on those matters. 
Question two, uh, how much of the 8 million has been raised by the foundation to the 30th of July, 2020? And the response to that is that the uh, SEM foundation currently has fundraising pledges and commitments uh, to approximately 7.5 million for the new SAM project. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Ariel. Moving on to next agenda item, uh, item number 8.5 is uh, financial hardship policy. There's a recommendation on page eight. Uh, would a councillor like to move a motion? Councillor O'Keefe. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to move the recommendation that the Council, number one, adopt the financial hardship policy, 34 poll slash two version 2.2, and two, review the financial hardship policy every four years in line with the rating strategy review. Thank you, Councillor O'Keefe. Do I have a second? Councillor Adam? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll second that motion. Thank you. Councillor O'Keefe, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. This is a required updated document that needed to be updated by December 2020. I think it's also a very important document. We need to let our residents know that there's certainly a hardship policy there that they can actually contact council in regard to any financial issues that they may be having, paying their rates or whatever that may be. So I think, you know, in these times more than ever, we need to stay very connected to the community. And um, I think, you know, residents need that opportunity to feel comfortable. They must have that, that um, opportunity to come to council, contact council and work out how we can support and help them if they are having any financial hardship. And as I said, particularly in these stressful times, there's a couple of um, changes within this document. One is that we've removed the condition of interest being charged on long-term financial hardship um, and the rates levy or charge to be paid in full before an interest waiver will be granted. So there's a couple of changes within the document, but I think, as I said, more than anything, that the residents, um, our residents, our community members feel very comfortable to come to council and we can actually work together to really give them some support if that's what they need. Thank you, Councillor O'Keefe. Councillor Adam, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, uh, I think Councillor O'Keefe covered it quite well there. I just want to add that, yeah, just to strengthen her comments around the community's feeling of security, I suppose, especially during these hard times we're experiencing now. Um, the community has to know that this council is not some uh, huge bank in a sense that will come uh, calling at midnight to, to get their rates. If you're struggling, you have issues, there is a hardship policy. It's there to be used and the council in the past have worked very closely with community members. Um, I mean, the, at the end of the day, the rates need to be paid, however, uh, we work closely and, uh, yeah, very closely and, and confidently with our community members to make sure that they can uh, navigate their way through this. So I really support this and uh, I'm glad we have this policy. And uh, I'd probably like to see it reviewed sooner than every four years, but I'm sure the next council may address that if that needs to be the case. But it's there. It's, uh, it's a compassionate uh, policy and I support it completely. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Adam. Would any councillor like to speak against the motion? Yes, Councillor Summer. Yes, um, I was reading it. It just doesn't seem to go far enough. Like we are in a recession. There's going to be people out there who are really struggling. Uh, it's great that we've removed the interest, but um, like was stated, people need to feel comfortable about approaching us and the language is pretty strict, which can be a bit off even there. Uh, the limit for the amount to be deferred under deferral is 10% of the capital improved value of the property. And that's not very much. Um, I'd like that removed just so that each application could be assessed on a case by case basis. Um, under waiver, it says council will not waive um, whole or in any party rate levy charge, special rate or special charge. Um, I think that could be an oversight considering the economic times we're going into and um, should be factored into maybe our COVID economic recovery response. Uh, it also says that we uh, should an economic downturn result in more ratepayers accessing the options available under this policy, there may be an impact on councillors' cash, councils cash flow. Should this occur, mm -hmm. council may need to slow or reduce projected expenditure. So my argument there is that we should be slowing and reducing expenditure anyway. It's written right there in black and white that it can be done. 
we knew we had some pretty big projects on the go that are taking a big chunk out of our budget, but we haven't decreased our spending overall. It just seems like, a, you know, business as usual. Um, I think we already should be looking at reducing and case by case, if people need their rates to be waived, we should be able to find means of doing that. Whereas this policy, whilst we're not charging interest, it just doesn't go far enough, I don't think. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Would any councillor like to speak for the motion? Councillor Sutton? You're on mute, mute Councillor Sutton. There is a there is a waiver by application for any people any person who is suffering financial hardship. It says or would suffer financial hardship. If that person paid the full amount of a rate or charge for which he or she is liable may apply to council for the waiver of the whole or part of any rate or charge or of any interest imposed for late payment. So that is available, which is good to know. Bye. Interpreted that differently. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Sutton. Would any councillor like to speak against the motion? Would any councillor like to speak for the motion? All right. Councillor O'Keefe, would you like to have your right of reply? Uh, no, thank you, Councillor Sutton. Raised what I was going to use my right of reply for. So thank you for that. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So we'll now go to the vote. Those in favour? Motion carried. Thank you. Next item is item 8.2 on page 11, local law number two, conduct at meetings and common seal. There's a recommendation on page 11. Would a councillor please uh, move the motion? Councillor Oswari. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to move the recommendation contained on page 11 of the agenda items one and two, inclusive with all the relevant subsections inside that notice. Thank you. Do I have a mover? Do I have a seconder? Councillor Sutton? You're on mute, Councillor Sutton. I'm happy to, accept, to <laughs> second that motion. Thank you. All right, Councillor Azvari, would you like to speak to the motion? Thanks, Madam Mayor. Council uh, last reviewed the local law number two in 2018, and it wasn't due for renew on, review until 2028, but the introduction of the Act has uh, subsequently required this Council to be uh, making changes. Uh, these procedures that we've got currently before Council form part of the uh, Council's local law number two, which talks about procedures for Council meetings in the common seal. The copy of the community impact statement was also made available on Council's website and it was subsequently put out for consultation uh, and no submissions uh, were received during that uh, period of time. The uh, officers of Council have now completed the statutory consultation process and are now putting this before us to make a decision of, uh, upon. Should it be adopted, uh, a public notice of the making of the local law will be published in the Shepherd and News and the Government Gazette and a copy will be sent to the Minister for Local Government. Thank you. Um, Councillor Sutton, would you like to speak to the motion? No, thank you, Madam Mayor. Let's set it all. Thank you. Would any councillor like to speak against the motion? Would any councillor like to speak for the motion? No? All right. So we'll now go to the vote. Those in uh, uh, here, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Can I speak Carry on. for the motion? Sure. Can you hear me? Yes, yep. I can. So you want to speak for the motion? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, only on. just to mention that the document does stipulate that an act will always have precedence over a local law. So even if there were glitches in there that aren't, um, that might be a bit vague or unclear, uh, in the interest of expediency, the act has pre precedence. So I'm willing to accept and support this one. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Okay, so we'll now go to the vote. Those in favour? 
motion carried on a post. Okay, so the next one is um, on our agenda, it's item number 8.3, contracts awarded under delegation, August 2020. Councillor Hazelman, do you want to move the motion? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll move as a motion the recommendation that's printed on page 14 of the agenda. Thank you. Do I have a second? Councillor O'Keefe. I'm happy thank to you. second, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Hazelman, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Each month we um, we list the, the contracts that are awarded under delegated authority by the Chief Executive Officer or awarded under the authority of a director or a manager and the request for tender is not yet advertised. I've always believed this is a, a very good exercise in openness, transparency, that um, people get the opportunity to see, A, what is being um, designed and delivered and also things that are, that are in the pipeline. So it's a, it's a very good practice that's come in in, in recent years and um, one that uh, council should be commended on for being so open about its processes. Thank you. Councillor O'Keefe, would you like uh, to speak to the motion? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just a couple of uh, things that are happening perhaps at the right time, and that's obviously the pool construction, uh, the Aquamoos, the outdoor 50 metre pool heating getting done, which will be great. Um, and also we're getting some supply of RPM bikes into Aquamoos. So once we can get ourselves back into those facilities, um, we'll you know, hopefully have some, some great updated equipment in the RPM room, which is fantastic. And obviously some of the contracts coming up are still you know, really important to the community and um, Great things will be uh, moving within those delegations and contracts. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor O'Keefe. Okay. Would anyone like to speak against the motion? Does any councillor want to speak against the motion? Sorry, Councillor Oswari, I didn't quite get it. No, no, I was going to okay. speak to the motion, Madam Mayor, right. but I'll wait okay. my turn. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were wanting to speak against the motion. Okay. No, not today. <laughs> Would any council like to speak for the motion? Yes, Councillor Adam? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I won't, I won't go on too long. I think the other two have covered it quite well. I just want to point out some of these uh, contracts may sound boring or, or uh, procedural on the surface, but they're very important, like the drainage design for the Shepparton Stadium and the Monaro project and the design of utility upgrades. These are th things that must be done prior to any obviously major project or building going ahead. So. They may sound insignificant, but without these projects happening, our aspirations to build the sport, the stadium and the Manara complex uh, will be delayed. So I'm glad to see we're on the front foot in getting these uh, primary sort of projects done prior, because without them, we can uh, further those, uh, those plans. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Adam. Would any councillor like to speak to the motion? <coughs> yes, Councillor Osbari. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Look, I always find with great interest that um, if you get on the social media platforms and you read some of the, I'll call it material that people put up talking about where council money goes and uh, the general naysayers and keyboard warriors that are critical, I often say to myself, maybe they should actually look at this agenda item and see where the actual money, the cost of running the municipality goes. And this, as Councillor Hazelman has said for many, many years, is a clear indication of the roadmap of how much council spends in terms of infrastructure. And infrastructure always costs an enormous amount of money. I think it's a very, very good idea and it uh, should remain into the future. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Aswari. Would anyone else like to speak to the motion? Okay, so we'll now go to the vote. Those in favor? Motion carried on opposed. Moving on to our next agenda item 8.4, we have council plan 2019-2020 progress report. And there's a recommendation on page 17. Would any councilor please move a motion? Councilor Summer? I'll move the motion as stated on that page. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Adam. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll second the motion. Thank you. Councillor Summer, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, this is basically a performance review of the entire council. It's the plan that we should all be abiding by. 
everybody gets together at the beginning of a term and sets out our goals and aspirations and what we think might be achievable for the next four years. And then we mark ourselves on those goals and see how we're performing. Um, looking at the targets, I think it might be fun to set the next target um, that no target be set under 50%. A lot of them are quite low in their aspirations, but that's generally across all councils are the same there. Uh, there's a fair bit of red. So we haven't, you know, some of it's COVID affected, some of it's organisational. Libraries and events are obviously not hitting targets, but I am pleased that our target of at least 2% Indigenous employment under the Al Begonia Agreement has been hit. And perhaps we should have celebrated a bit more publicly about that um, achievement. Uh, the current em employment figure stands at 2.3% and our target was 2%. So it's fairly representative of our population of Indigenous, which is good. Um, I'm unsure how employment and jobs overall are still tracking well through this pandemic, but we have had funding come across and we've managed to retain most of our employees. And that's good because they spend money in the economy. Um, yeah, that's good to see. But what um, was disappointing was how far behind we are in funding asset renewals. The target was 100%. And perhaps um, it might have been exciting at the time, but we may have been a bit overzealous in thinking that we something that we could deliver. And actions around the Municipal Public Health and Wellbeing Action Plan, they appear to reflect our targets exactly. There's no deviation. It's just this is our target. This is what's been achieved. So I'm not sure that's robust reporting, but maybe. Again, um, public health should be the cornerstone of everything we do. If a separate action plan isn't integrated properly into all of what we do, then perhaps we should be looking at adopting a different format. Uh, then we may actually make improvements in things like people writing to work. Uh, as it stands, that action plan is separate. We've had min ministerial exemption to have an action plan list for public health instead of actual, an actual document that fits into the plan. So that's something I'd like to look at if we should go back to how it used to be. And um, yeah, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Councillor Adam, would you like to speak yeah. to the motion? <coughs> Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I think uh, Councillor Summer raised quite a few uh, points there, which were quite valid. Absolutely. Look, my personal opinion about this, uh, the council plan, obviously at the beginning of each term, as Councillor Summer said, we all get together with the council and uh, we discuss our aspirations and our strategies over the next four years. There's a lot of motherhood statements seem to creep their way into these documents as well. They're not that specific in some instances and sometimes they're well, they're all aspirational to a degree. Some can be achieved. Maybe some were a little bit uh, too hopeful uh, in achieving. However, we do need a basic framework, and that's what this is about. Um, and obviously, uh, marking your, your progress is necessary to see whether for councillors who may sit on the next council to, to get a good understanding of what's achievable and what's not. But it's good to set a high target because you should be aiming for that. However, as I said, a lot of these motherhood statements, I think, um, and uh, situations that change, as such as COVID or economic situations change throughout that period. We do have reviews, obviously, where we get the opportunity to change direction potentially. So in, in uh, essence, it's, it's a good thing. We, we need to have it, but uh, I think just the general reviews we do throughout the year dictate more our direction, I think, than the overall plan, to be quite honest. But that's my opinion. But uh, you do need that framework, and I think that's why I support this motion. Okay, thank you, Councillor Adam. Would any councillor like to speak against the motion? All right, would any councillor like to speak for the motion? No, all right, so we'll now go to the vote. Those in favor? Motion carried unopposed. Next is item 8.5, uh, financial statements and performance statement for year ended 30th June, 2020. There's a recommendation on page 20. Would a councillor like to move a motion? Councillor Giovinetti. You're on mute, Councillor Giovinetti. Lucky you didn't hear what I said then. Um, <laughs> thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I would like to move the recommendation on page 20, uh, and I will read it out. For the council approving principle, the financial statements and performance statement for the financial year in 30th of June, 2020, and authorise the mayor, Councillor Seymour Abdullah, 
the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Jenny Adam, and the Chief Executive Officer, Peter Harriet, to certify the financial statements and to certify the performance statement in their final form after any changes recommended or agreed by the auditor have been made. Thank you, Councillor Giovanetti. Do I have a seconder? Councillor O'Keefe? I'm happy to second that. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Giovanetti, would you like to speak to the motion? Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. This is a very detailed and complex document. Um, that's a requirement uh, under the Local Government Act um, that we need to uh, forward off to the uh, Auditor General. Uh, and before we can do that, uh, Council has to approve the document. For people listening in tonight, um, I can assure you that uh, the, the particular document has been through the rounds of the table, through the uh, Council's Audit and Risk um, management Committee uh, and also by the uh, uh, Auditor General's appointed auditor um, who has done the audit on the council books. Uh, so therefore, before it gets to the stage where it goes to the Auditor General's department, it has already been audited twice. Um, and just to give a, a snapshot, I suppose, of some of the um, interesting facets that have come out of it, I don't intend to go through it in any great detail because the, it's quite voluminous, the, uh, the document itself. But uh, basic uh, figures, we had a $27 million surplus for 2020, but that was made up of uh, $6.6 million in uh, federal financial assistance grants that were received in May 2020 that were actually related to the following financial year, the 2021 financial year. So that is the surplus of fraction. Uh, rates and charges are up $2.9 million, which, and that related to the 2.5% rate cap and an average of 1.5% uh, garbage charge increase. Our statutory fees and fines were up uh, 0.15 million, um, which was uh, because of the addition of the mandatory swimming pool registrations. User fees were down slightly. Um, that was due to facility closures, uh, primarily due to COVID. Operating grants were down by 0.62 million, which related to the uh, HAC programs that we know no longer deliver through council. But our capital grants were up by 8.22 million, which uh, related to uh, SAM funding uh, of 11 million compared to only 4.5 million in 2019. Um, they're probably the, the main items of interest. Uh, there are many others that you can go through, but I'll be here all night if I uh, tried to uh, put it down in, in any more detail. Uh, I'd just like to congratulate uh, Matt Jarvis and his team for the work that they've done in preparing this, these documents. Uh, as Matt said to us today, it's almost a 12 month uh, job now to uh, get these figures out and uh, be accurate. Uh, and I think they've done a fantastic job and I'm just glad it's them and not me who has to do it because accounting standards have changed significantly over the, even since I've retired in four years and uh, it is a very complex exercise to go through. Thank you very much, Councillor Giovanetti. Councillor O'Keefe, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Giovanetti, for covering that so well. I think just um, emphasising the in-depth in you know, content to this document, it's very important that, like all financial statements with any organisation or company, we need to make sure that we're obviously on top of it and we need to have it obviously out to the public and we also need guidance of where we're heading, you know, the next council budget, council plan. So it's an important document, one that we've all been obviously studying and um, we need to keep hold of and I also need to acknowledge the, the hard work all, also of the risk um, audit and risk management committee as well they do a great job and they certainly you know come back to us with lots of interesting things and and um, it's an important part of the process obviously for them to have oversight of that to ensure that the document is correct and that um, you know we, we are where we need to be so thank you for that thank you Councillor okay would any councillor like to speak against the motion would any councillor like to speak for the motion? Councillor Adam? Yes, thanks, Madam Mayor. Look, I just want to reiterate uh, the words of Councillor Giovanetti and Councillor O'Keefe. But uh, Bruce, you covered it to a T there. I think you mentioned the points that really need mentioning. Um, it is uh, a very large document. It's very detailed. It's very complex. You know, just sitting through the briefings and listening to Matt explain all the different components was quite grueling, to be honest. However, it needed to be done. I think the community can feel secure and comfortable that this will be audited correctly. It has been audited already. 
and we're confident that uh, any further auditing will, will certainly, it'll certainly pass the test there. Um, yeah, great work. And as, as Matt said today, as you said, Bruce, uh, this is no longer just a 30-day exercise or a three-month exercise. It's a continual, basically, it's an auditing loop that continually happens at council. Uh, I'm happy it does because it uh, gives confidence to not only us as councillors but the community that, this is, uh, that we're on top of the financial situation, which I firmly believe we are. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Adam. Would any councillor like to speak to the motion? Councillor Summer? Just, I found that performance statement to be very clear and concise, sort of formatted differently to our usual documents, and I liked it. Um, it mentions Greater Shepparton is a transport hub, which sounds great, but our train services and things makes me wonder where that came from. But apparently that's um, what we're known as. And if we're not known as that, we should be. So, um, yeah. So there's plenty of meat on the bone. There's, yeah. Look, I, I'll accept it. It's good. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Would any councillor like to speak to the motion? Okay. All right, I would also like to say, yes, Councillor Hazelman, do you want to speak to the motion? No, okay. <laughs> All right, before we go to the vote, I would also just like to say thanks to our uh, finance department and uh, the directors who have really worked hard on this process. And uh, the rigor and robustness of this process was very evident. And uh, during the whole process, all the concerns and questions from councillors were answered very uh, promptly and uh, in detail. So uh, I do appreciate that. And um, the robustness of this process was very evident in a sense that it has gone through many uh, levels of audits and uh, review. And uh, this recommendation coming from audit and risk committee meeting gives us another level of confidence. Uh, in the process and also in the uh, report and figures that we have received. So after saying that, I think um, that's all I wanted to say and we'll now go to the vote. Those in favor? Motion carried unopposed. Thank you. So next item 8.6. Twenty 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 one quarter one forecast review. There's a recommendation on page twenty three. Would a councillor please move a motion? Councillor O'Keefe. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm happy to move the recommendation on page twenty three that the council number one adopt the revised forecast identified by the twenty 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 one quarter one forecast review. And number two, adopt the following amendments to user fees and charges. A, registration of microchipped and DSX cats under six months of age. Current amount, $4 excluding GST. Amended amount, no charge. A, oops, sorry. B, registration of microchipped and DSX dogs under six months of age. Current amount, $7. Amended amount, no charge. Thank you, Councillor O'Keefe. Do I have a seconder? A seconder, please. Councillor Adam. Yes, Madam Mayor, I'll second that motion. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor O'Keefe, do you want to speak to the motion? Um, just very briefly, Madam Mayor, there's a couple of items there obviously of interest and um, we obviously support that. I think it's important that we control the microchipping of our cats and dogs. It's an important part of our municipality to make sure that we do have that control in place. Um, the summary of the report really is just the draft forecast financial performance for, as we said, 2020-21 financial year compared to the adopted budget. So we just are going through that quarter process for the last two months. Thank you very much, Councillor O'Keefe. Councillor Adam, do you want to speak to the motion? Yeah, even briefer than that. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, this is the, the purpose why we have uh, reviews for, and that's what's happened here. We've reviewed it, and these are a couple of items that have come out of that review, which, uh, yeah, may not sound like much, but I'm sure it affects uh, quite a large component of our community. So, yeah, very good. Thank you very much, Councillor Adam. Would any councillor like to speak against the motion? Councillor Summer. Thank you. Just looking at that, uh, just feels that, again, we can do better than what's been presented. Like it's great that we're waiving a $4 fee, but we are entering a recession. So I'm not expecting my objection to move mountains at all. Every budget, I put my hand up in objection. It doesn't seem to get anywhere. But um, I don't think we should have a business as usual budget in times that are anything but usual. 
So notwithstanding this pandemic, we've invested so much on our major capital projects, Cosgrove, Sam, et cetera. I think we should be attempting to buffer that expense with reductions, more reductions, and not pass this problem on to ratepayers with the assumption that they're going to be able to pay. This is a significant global event that's happening right now. And I don't think we've grasped just how, how much we are able to help people if that was our intention. So hopefully moving forward, we can all come together and get a bit more strategic in how we can alleviate this financial hardship because it's only going to get worse. And we re we're supposed to be representing and helping rate payers, not business as usual when it comes down to COVID-19. So that, I, I just think we can do better. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Yes, Madam Councilor Madam, just, a, just a point of clarification, um, quarter one, uh, what month or how many months does that cover and what period does that cover, this forecast review? Is it the last three months? Mr. Harriet, you, maybe you can... Thank you, Councillor Adam. Yes, it's the uh, first quarter, the first three months. Oh, what month? What months would they be, Mr. Harriet? They would be July, August, and September. Okay, thank you. Just wanted to clarify that. There's a second quarter re review coming, and a third and a fourth, I mm. presume. Correct. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Point of clarification: These projections go a lot further than just what we've been presented with, based on what we've already done. This is where we're actually looking into the future. So, I'm not sure what was meant by that. But doesn't matter. Point of clarification. That's what it was. Are you asking for a clarification or just a um, comment? Okay, noted. Um, moving on to counts. Uh, sorry, moving on to the next uh, step. We will be. Yeah, I think I'll go back to asking uh, councillors. Does anyone want to speak to the motion? No. Um, Councillor O'Keefe, do you want to speak? Uh, to, do you want to use your right of reply? Uh, just briefly, Madam Mayor, I think it's also important to note the Council's COVID recovery um, package as well at this point of time, that we are addressing, obviously, the COVID situation across our municipality. There's certainly some things we aren't aware of as yet as far as impact, but we do have, obviously, some significant things in place to support, you know, the community across COVID and, you know, whatever that means, we still have to wait and see. But we have that recovery package there. We need to, you know, remind people to look at that. There's certainly been lots of opportunity and lots of people using and tapping into that um, financial support. Thank you, Councillor Keith. We'll now go to the vote. Those in favour? Motion carried. Next item is 8.7, August 2020 monthly financial report. And there's a recommendation on page 26. Would a councillor like to move a motion? Councillor Giovinetti. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to move the recommendation on uh, page 26. Um, the states the council receive and note the August 2020 monthly financial report. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Osvari. I'd like to second the recommendation as a motion, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Giovanetti, would you like to speak to the motion? Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. Unfortunately, we don't have our usual finance minister, Councillor Patterson, here tonight. <laughs> so I'll try to... Um, do a uh, half reasonable job on it. And I can't refer it to Mr. Titzel because he's not here either. So here we go. Um, we established the budget back in at the meeting in June, 2020. And the um, financial report for August is really only for two months. So it's very difficult to pick any trends that are going to occur after only two months of operation. The council staff have provided us with uh, reports on our operating performance, capital works performance, our income statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement and capital work statement. And from uh, what I can recall from reading it, I think everything is tracking along reasonably well. Uh, there are some items that are perhaps uh, uh, a little over budget at this particular point in time, primarily due to COVID-19, but the, the, over the period of the year, we may be able to uh, swing back on those. Thank you, Councillor Giovanetti. Councillor Orisvari, do you want to speak to the motion? No, thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Would any councillor like to speak against the motion? 
Would any councillor like to speak for the motion? Okay, so we'll now go to the vote. Those in favor? Motion carried unopposed. Thank you. Right, so now we move on to community directory recommendations. Item number 9.1. Memorandum of Understanding, Yota Yota Nation Aboriginal Corporation and Greater Shepparton City Council. There's a recommendation on page 28. Councillor Hazelman, would you like to move the motion? Uh, thank you. Um, I'm prepared to move the recommendation that the Council approve the Memorandum of Understanding between Greater Shepparton City Council and Yota Yota Nation Aboriginal Corporation but with a change to the memorandum of understanding. And that change would be that at item uh, six, 6.1 under council commitments, item I currently reads, will acknowledge traditional owners of the land before each council meeting and at civic receptions. I would replace the word traditional owners of the land with the words your to your to peoples. Thank you, Councillor Hazelman. Do I have a seconder? Oh, sorry, Councillor Giovanetti. Do you want uh, to... Madam Mayor, I'd like to just force you out of our motion, if you don't mind. If uh, Councillor Hazelman's uh, amendment uh, is lost, I would like to move the recommendation that the Council approve the memorandum of understanding. Uh, excuse me, Councillor Giovanetti. Uh, the, this is not a recommend. Uh, this is not an amendment. That's that's the motion that Councillor Hazelman has uh, tabled. Okay, I'll still force out of motion that if oh. the uh, motion is lost. Okay. that I'll move the recommendation as it's printed. All right, noted. Thank you. So, Councillor Adam, I... I'm just getting in, uh, Madam Mayor, if you're asking for a seconder. Seconder, that's right. Thank you. So you are a seconder, okay. Thank you. Councillor Hazelman, would you like to speak to the motion? <clears throat> uh, yes, thank you. And look, and I'm, I'm assuming all councillors have read the memorandum of understanding in great detail, particularly council's commitments that are outlined there within. And if you read through them, you will recognise that there is a, a serious inconsistency both within the document and with other decisions made by council. Um, we adopted back in June of last year, a, a reconciliation action plan, which was acknowledged by everybody as being both an internal council plan and in the mayoral statement at the time, so I hope it will be regarded by the entire community as council endeavouring to build a foundation from which we can both move forward. Um, what was in that actual plan though, and what we adopted unanimously <coughs> in June of last year, was that we would revise council official acknowledgement to traditional owners to specifically acknowledge the registered Aboriginal party and the eight clans. We also extolled the virtue of that through the, the press releases at the time and said that it was sending a strong message to the community about council's commitment. Now, that's the, the plan that we adopted. In this um, memorandum of understanding, we've indicated at point N that we will employ an Aboriginal import engagement officer to foster relationships and to assist council in achieving the actions in the Reconciliation Action Plan and will engage and invite your to your the nation's Aboriginal property to participate in delivering the actions of Council's Reconciliation Plan. And yet, as a Council, we can't even bring ourselves to name the group who we're actually going to form this Memorandum of Understanding with in our, in our documentation. So we adopted the wrap where we said, yep, we've given a commitment. It's not a strategy, it's not a desirable, it's a straight out commitment. The words give it away. Action plan. We committed to change the acknowledgement. So we move forward to March of 2020 and the officers presented a report which to give effect to that wrap and change the acknowledgement. Take, undertaken after consultation with your Yorta Nation Aboriginal Corporation, Bangarang and Shepparton Regional Reconciliation Group regarding the changes to the acknowledgement. Um, and that change was also um, canvassed when developing the wrap in the first place, which was undertaken in partnership with Reconciliation Australia. Now, having supported the wrap, council has now, now opposed the change to the acknowledgement, begging the question, how does council have two adopted positions, which are current? The wrap is still a current document. It's a, it's a, it's a formal document, planning document of the council. Yeah, we've had a resolution saying we won't want to change the, the acknowledgement. So having two positions, 
Should the RAP be amended? If councillors do not support a change to the acknowledgement now, why did they unanimously support it only a few months previously? That's, to my mind, that's, I struggle. The term Yorta Yorta defines the language group for Indigenous people yes. in this area. Councillor Hazelman, your three minutes are over. Do you want an extension? Ah, yes, please, Madam. I've only just got started. Okay, is everyone okay with that? I take it as a yes. Thank you, you can proceed. As, as I said, Yorta Yorta defines the language group for Indigenous people in this area. It's been recognised as such by state and federal governments. The Shires of Moira and Compaspe acknowledged the Yorta Yorta peoples in their acknowledgement before council meetings. So why are we dragging the chain? Government protocols state the term traditional owners should only be used across a large area where the name of the Indigenous people is unknown. We had the chair of the reconciliation group come to us, an Indigenous leader, a prominent Indigenous leader, and tell us that the term traditional owner was offensive when we knew who he was. We wouldn't say to Councillor Adam and deny his Albanian heritage um, equally as valid. We could call him a European as well as an Albanian. Both terms would be correct. I've had community leaders emotionally thank me for my position on this issue. And yet I am sure we will hear that because there is not widespread petitioning, there is no case for change. In my view, that's victim blaming by definition. If you don't ask for it, you can't have it, seems to be the attitude. We've been asked for it, and yet we are the ones that are out of, out of kilter with what everybody else is, is going through. You can say it's a political statement. It's not. It's an acknowledgement of the people, of the Indigenous people of this area, who are Yorta Yorta by name, by definition, by their existence. Thank you, Councillor Hazelman. Um, with that, I would request Councillor Adam. Do you have any, uh, do, do you want to speak to the motion? Uh, not right now, thanks, Madam, Madam Mayor. I'll reserve my right to speak later on, please. Okay. So would any councillor like to speak against the motion? Councillor Summer. Yes, I think it's very disappointing that we're going through all of this again. We have an MOU delivered to us by the Yorta Yorta, written by the Yorta Yorta, and we're trying to change it at the 11th hour. We've already gone through this. It might've been mentioned in the Reconciliation Act, but we do not follow every single strategy to the point of prescription. That's why it comes to a meeting. That's why we look at it a bit deeper. That's why we um, make decisions in meetings based on a document, it's a working document. Um, I just find it appalling what's happening here because we upset quite a few people last time. We upset Yorta Yorta, we upset other clinics who are easily offended if we exclude them from the welcome and they don't necessarily feel included by the Yorta Yorta. So I can understand from a governance perspective why we would want to um, use the official title of Yorta Yorta and continue that. But from an ethical perspective, I don't think we should. Um, we'd be following state and federal law. I do understand that. Language group, even though fluency of the language is not... Um, it, it doesn't encompass all of those groups, but um, state and federal government do not have a very good track record in making laws and policy that benefit Indigenous people. I mean, we have the stolen generation, we have the white Australia policy, and now we've got this that is potentially divisive and doesn't include all of them, all, them, all of, you know. So people aware of these laws because it's been used to denigrate their culture and dismiss them. And this is another example of that if you're not necessarily identifying with Yorta Yorta. So despite what it says on paper, yes, the rap is a group, but uh, I just think it, it's really hard for me to say this because I feel like I'm offending a whole bunch of people here, but um, it needs to be said. So there's been mentioned that people um, are disaffected when it comes to whether or not their decisions should be heard by us. Of course they're disaffected because these sort of things happen all the time and it does. It creates this feeling of being dispossessed from the land and not heard by governments. So Yorta Yorta as a political entity does not encompass reconciliation and the acknowledgement of country that is spiritual. It's ambiguous. It's supposed to be that. That is, that is reconciliation. 
it shouldn't be offensive to people. And I'm shocked that people feel offended when they hear traditional owners of the land. It's fantastic that we say that. We're under no obligation to say it at all. And it's fantastic that we do. But turning it into a political football when we have an MOU in front of us that really could result in some positive change and some real things is hugely disappointing. So, um, oh, look, I guess it'll just come down to the vote, but I completely disagree. And I think it's really irresponsible and um, inappropriate sorry, to raise it now. Are over. Okay, your three minutes are over. Is that all? Do you want an extension? Oh, I could rant more, but no. Yeah, okay, all right, thank you. Um, would any councillor like to speak for the motion? Would any councillor? Councillor Oriswari, do you want to speak for the motion? Yes, thanks, Madam Mayor. Look, first and foremost, I'd like to note and acknowledge the commentary by Councillor Hazelman. He's actually, he's uh, turned his mind a lot to it, and I can see that he speaks with passion. Um, and I can understand where he's coming from. But by the same token, I also note and acknowledge the commentary by uh, Councillor Summer. And uh, I, I know that uh, these issues can become very much political footballs. And on this particular occasion, I'm more inclined to support Councillor Summer's position in relation to the question of traditional owners. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a generic term in the sense that it encompasses a whole range of, of peoples. And uh, I think in this... In this potentially volatile uh, situation where we have an MOU in place, I think that's that's the position that I'm going to adopt. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Osvari. This was, you spoke against the motion, am I right? Yeah, because when I asked for who wants to speak for the motion, you raised your hand, so I was expecting you to speak for the motion. But that's yeah, I am, fine. It's clarified. I, I am speaking for the motion. I did speak for the motion. You speak for the motion. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, would any councillor like to speak against the motion? Councillor Giovanetti. Yes, Madam Mayor. Look, I'll just take a more simplistic approach to what is a very complex issue. I acknowledge what uh, Councillor Hazelman has said, and uh, many of the issues he's raised there are, are, are correct. But the fact of the matter is, when we initially discussed the uh, acknowledgement to country, we did request that we meet with a number of Aboriginal groups and we did meet with, with several. Now, uh, the Yorta Yorta obviously were in favour of uh, an acknowledgement to their uh, clan. Um, another group said, well, they'll go along with whatever we decide. Uh, and another, another group indicated that they were not in favour of it at all. So in hindsight, what we as councillors at the time decided was that the most respectful way that we could deal with that particular issue was to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, which we felt covered everybody. And we felt that no one was being left out. And that was the reason that we decided to take that approach. Um, the MOU is quite clear. Um, the uh, Yorta Yorta Nation have uh, agreed to the MOU, but they stated in there that they want an option within 12 months, they may wish to change it. Now that's fair and reasonable in any MOU, whether they want to change the acknowledgement or any other part of it. That's, their, uh, that's a decision that they can come back to the next council with. But um, I think the decision that we originally made was, uh, was the correct decision. And uh, I think it should, uh, should remain. Thank you, Councillor Giovanetti. So would anyone like to speak for the motion? Councillor Adam? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Do you Mayor, reserve I'll, your uh, right to speak later? Do you want to speak now? I will speak now. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Um, I, I don't think I could have said it any better than Council, ha Councillor Hazelman did, actually. A lot of the points that I wanted to bring up, he did, <clears throat> and he, uh, he enunciated them perfectly, actually, quite eloquently, may I say. Um, listen, at the end of the day, I find it almost embarrassing that... Uh, Greater Shepparton having the largest cohort of the Yorta Yorta peoples within this municipality, I haven't got the courage to actually mention the Yorta Yorta name in our acknowledgements. I know that it's a very sensitive issue, as Councillor uh, Summer said, in the sense that some people might find it um, offensive. However, if I believe that myself, that I was offending someone by supporting Councillor Hazelman's 
um, suggestion here, I wouldn't be speaking to it at all. However, Yorta Yorta other, is a language group, as Councillor Hazen said quite specifically. Uh, the other groups, most of the other groups share the same ancestors, and I'm talking recent ancestors with grandparents. So I find it difficult to, to differentiate between Yorta Yorta and some of the other clans. Um, the RAP is there. Councillor Hazen explained that quite clearly. We've adopted that. That's the uh, Reconciliation Action Plan. However, there's also a recognised Aboriginal party. That's also a legal entity in itself. And a lot of the clans, I know we're going over old territory here, but a lot of the clans, and especially the Bangaranga, I've got to say the name so people know what we're talking about, <clears throat> were part of the initial group. Some say that was political expedient. Some say it wasn't. However, I can't say that anyone should, could or should be offended. However, however, that's me saying that. I'm not an Indigenous person. However, we've got to make a decision here. I know what's going to happen. If this doesn't get over tonight, it'll come back in three or four months or six months with the new council, uh, as I expect that it would. I really can't... I find it embarrassing, as I said when I opened this commentary, that we, out of the largest of, uh, <clears throat> cohort of people here, we can't have the courage to say the Yorta Yorta people yet. Moira can... Can Paspi can. I speak to people in those uh, municipalities quite regularly and councillors. There hasn't been a, a huge backlash. The people that have presented to us over the last six months or so, different groups from the Aboriginal population, they've <clears throat> said it quite clearly that uh, the decision is ours. Uh, there was no offence taken. Many of them said that personally to me as well. So I, I just think we need the courage to do that, to do this now and put the Yorta Yorta name where it should be so people can recognise that name and, and that group and that people and that culture for our municipality. That's all I can say, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Adam. Would any council like to speak to the motion? Okay, I'll just, before we go to the vote, or before um, I offer Councillor Hazelman to speak, uh, to, to use your right. Yes, you Councillor I haven't been asked to speak yet, sorry. Oh, I didn't see you. I asked if someone wants to speak. Do you want to speak against the motion or for the motion? Against the motion, thank you. Against the motion? Okay, sorry, I lost track of that cycle. Uh, yeah, please. Um, I'm finding it astounding that we're actually sitting here having this conversation, and I think Councillor Hazelman and Councillor Adam um, are making it look like we just went tick and moved on. That's exactly the opposite to what has happened here. We have had months of consultation. We've had months of people coming in. We've already brought this to a council meeting and it was an extremely difficult, challenging time because we absolutely had people object and we absolutely had people support. There was definitely not a clear road to this. If there was, it wouldn't. we wouldn't be in this position of divide. So I think Glossing it over saying that, you know, it should have been an easier decision and it was an obvious one is the opposite to exactly what has happened with this issue. So I'm actually offended by that because I think both sides did come in. We did hear both sides to the to the story of who wanted, you know, the order you ought to acknowledge, who didn't. You know, there's more than 16 clans in our community and there was absolutely, you know, objection. So, you know, making it sound like that we just made a decision that wasn't informed, that wasn't respected. I'm actually offended by that because I absolutely support all the Indigenous community across out the Greater Shepparton area. And it's a complex issue that council has to deal with, but saying that it was an easier decision or it should have just been a tick, I'm actually offended. I think there was a lot more you know, conversations around the decision that many of the councillors made that came to that decision last time that we decided to stick to the status quo until we felt more comfortable you know, that we could come to perhaps a more united decision. There's a very big divide here, and that's that's because it's a complex issue. It's not an easy issue. So I absolutely object to the, the comments of making it sound like that we should be following, you know, what other people are doing or what other people are saying. We've had our own consultation, we've had our own presentations, and we've all made decisions around that. So I'm actually disappointed that this has come back again and causing people upset when we are trying to move forward. This is about the MOU and it's an incredibly positive document. And I'd like to stay on track with that. Okay, thank, thank you, you. Councillor O'Keefe. Uh, you spoke against the motion. I would again give um, those who haven't spoken, yes, uh, this opportunity to speak for the motion. Uh, Councillor Sutton, do you want to speak for the motion or against the motion? You're on mute. Against the motion, Madam Mayor. Okay, can I, uh, because we're following that cycle of against and for, so Councillor O'Keefe spoke against the motion, and I would like to speak for the motion, and then I'll come back to you, Councillor Sutton, to speak against the motion. Uh, I just have to make a few points. Uh, Councillor 
Fern Summer uh, made a comment that Yora Yora is a political entity. I am not sure what that what does that really mean because as far as I understand, the Greater Shepparton local government area is within the land of the Yota Yora peoples. And Council's current acknowledgement that was adopted in 2004, it does not specify the Yota Yoda people as the traditional owners of the land that comprises Greater Shepparton. I believe that it is Can I, can I reply to that? Can I reply no. to that? Is that a uh, let, me, let me finish my, uh, what I have to say. And uh, uh, so you've no, used your nice opportunity. It needs to be a point of order yeah. or something. Yeah, so I'm not sure whether it's point of order or point of clarification, but yes, Councillor Summer, what is well, is that a point of order or point of clarification? Well, it it was a clarification, I think, because you're saying that um, I've said that it's a political entity, and when I said that, I was referring to the rap being used as justification for having the Yorta Yorta language group in the welcome. So. Okay, my um, counter argument is that uh, what I heard was that you saying Yoda Yoda is a political entity. Regardless of that, I will just uh, finish what I have to say. I believe that it is important to build a relationship between Yoda Yoda peoples and council um, and to facilitate this ongoing process of reconciliation. Acknowledging Yoda Yoda peoples will give us, uh, will give our due respect and recognition to the owners of the land. And with this respectful relationship, only we can move forward with true and genuine reconciliation and engagement with the Aboriginal community. Yora Yora is not a clan, it, can, it encompasses all clans. Uh, we have heard from Yora Yora elders and people um, in the past few months and actually over the last four years that we have been in this council. My understanding is that they do feel disrespected, not seeing Yoda Yoda mentioned explicitly in our acknowledgement. Hence, that's my reason to support the motion that has been tabled today by Councillor Hazelman. Uh, with that, I would now uh, invite Councillor Sutton, uh, who wants to speak against the motion. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just like to point out that the RAP is a recognised Aboriginal party, so it is a bit. It is a politically recognised party or recognised by the by the state government. Um, I also agree with both Kim, Bruce, and Fern. What they've stated is correct. If we do if we do recognise Yorta Yorta, we are hurting other other tribes. So there's no getting around that, and we have talked about this quite a bit over the last twelve months. And it's come to the meeting once before and it's just coming again. And I just think that we've already been over it. We've talked about it and it doesn't matter which way we go, we're going to hurt somebody. So if we do traditional owners, that encompasses everybody. If we do yorta yorta, it leaves somebody out. So I'm just not sure, you know, which way to go really. But even if we, if we're at something where there's Yorta Yorta people, maybe we recognise the Yorta Yorta people by name and tribe. And if we're somewhere where there's a Bangarang something, we recognise the, the person who's the Bangarang and their tribe. And I think that's a way to go rather than just um, say traditional owners. Thank you, Councillor Sutton. I think everybody has spoken. I would now come back to Councillor Hazelman. You have your right. Oh, and, and point of clarification. Yes, Before please. Councillor Hayman speaks, could I please uh, have the motion clarified for councillors? Okay. Councillor Hazelman, would you please read out the motion that you. Yep. The motion, the motion would be that, the as, as it appears in the agenda, with the change to the actual memorandum itself, which would, at the current time, at part 6.1.2, I reads, will acknowledge traditional owners of the land before each council meeting and at civic receptions. And if the motion was successful, we would change, would take the term traditional owners of the land and replace it with the Yorta Yorta peoples. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Hazelman, I would now, now invite you to use your right of reply. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, this is... Um, this is an oddity. I actually agree in one point with Councillor Summer that people find this offensive. She might well recall 
an Aboriginal leader sitting in our boardroom and addressing her directly and saying, you don't appreciate that the term traditional owner offends me personally. Point of order, Madam Mayor. We also had people from the Bangarang come in and say the exact uh, same. No, 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 we didn't. That's- Yes, that's... we did. No, my no. response, my response, my response to when they said that was, can you imagine if you were in the Bangarang clan and how you'd feel then? Because he no, said, no, grandmother- Thank you for making this point and we have noted and Councillor Hazelman, could you please uh, resume? Carry on. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We also had a number of councillors refer to Yorta Yorta as a clan or a tribe. Um, it just demonstrates how poorly informed we all are on the actual issues here. Yorta Yorta is a language group for this area. I've got a map of Australia in my office produced by the Australian Government of Language Groups and it defines this area as the territory of the Yorta Yorta by language. Point, point, of, point of order, in the MOU, it specifies that not everybody in the Yorta Yorta um, area speak the language. So <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a common definition term. If you look in Melbourne, for example, you will see people of the Coolum Nations. It's, it's common, it's the practice around Australia to divide the country by language. And that's what's being done. And so- Very Caucasian way of doing things. And, so. and you've, you'll cause great offence tonight to be referring to the Yorta Yorta as a clan or a tribe, which people have done and so be it. Um, reference to that re re reconciliation plan well, it's not, we didn't really mean it. We didn't, it needs to come back to council. It wasn't really a plan. It's just a strategy. Would, your... would I, re I would request you to please, um, uh, you know, let Councillor Hazelman speak. It, it was referred to as a strategy when in fact it was adopted as a plan with a direct commitment from council to do it. We failed that commitment because when it came back and put words to the form, we rejected it. Now, you can't argue with the facts. That's exactly what we did. Um, and agree. There is, in the memorandum of understanding, recognising from the order order perspective that this council probably would not change the acknowledgement is why they requested a 12-month review. They'll leave it until the next council, and I'm, I'm prepared to wager a dollar, and I'll give anyone in the room, the virtual room, you can pick your own odds. I will wager that in the very initial stage of the new council, this will get changed. And I reckon it's the shame of this council that our legacy will be that we didn't do it and the new council will fix up our mess. Is that all, Councillor Hazelman? Yes, thank you. Thank you. So with now, we'll now go to the vote. Those in favour? Okay. Those against? Okay, so we now have four and four, and I'll use uh, the mayor's casting vote, and I'll I'll go in favour of the motion. So motion carried. With that, we we'll now move on. We we'll now move on to item number nine point two. which is Greater Shepherd and Women's Charter Advisory Committee membership appointments. There's a recommendation on page 32. Would any councillor please move, move a motion? Mm. Councillor O'Kay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to move the recommendation. I won't read it all out, but it's basically um, upgrading our members to the committee. We have four positions of new membership, which I'll list them out that have actually have been successful. We have Samantha Spink, Simone, Simone Masters, Catherine Maddox and Olga Novak. And I'd also also like to acknowledge the past committee members that will be leaving and thank them, which is Fatima Manu, Zayda Mohammed, Shabrin and Suzanne Wallace for their significant contribution to the Greater Shepherd and Women's Charter Advisory Committee. Thank you, Councillor Heap. Do I have a second? Councillor Sutton? I'm happy to, see, happy to second that motion. Thank you, Councillor Sutton. Councillor O'Keefe, 
Do you want to speak to the motion? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, look, this is a really, obviously, a very positive Women's Charter Committee. Um, I sit as chair, and it's an incredibly important committee across the Greater Shepparton, across our community. It uh, strengthens women in leadership. It also promotes um, inclusiveness across our community. The Women's Charter have done some great work, as I said, I sat as the chair, including International Women's Day. It's a real champion of voices across our community for women and to make sure that there's mm. uh, quality across our municipality and that we continue to really work together as community leaders, but also as people coming within our community to feel accepted and wanted and valued. And I think they're doing some great work. They're doing some very diverse work across the committee. And it's certainly one of our council committees mm. that we should be very proud of. Thank you, Councillor O'Keefe. Councillor Sutton, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, no, thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Would any councillor like to speak against the motion? Would any councillor like to speak for the motion? <coughs> councillor Hazelman? Yes, thank you. Um, in, in speaking to the motion, I'd, um, I'd like to acknowledge the, the role that councillors have played, in particular yourself, I think Councillor O'Keefe and Councillor Adem, in being champions of this, uh, this committee over the years, and your role should be recognised and acknowledged. And if someone else in the room has done the mm -hmm. same, my apologies for the omission. I think that the, the new council needs to really um, focus attention around this committee and foster it and encourage it going forward. I saw some data coming out the other day that in the, in the lead up to this um, next council election, where women's representation currently sits at 38% of councillors across the state and a number of the industry bodies are significantly expecting that to drop quite substantially after this election, purely because of the COVID circumstances. And so I think that going forward, the role of this committee, I said, needs to be um, uh, encouraged, enhanced, and if resources are required to ensure that uh, this committee operates at its full functionality, the council should abide by it. Thank you, Councillor Hazelman. Would any councillor like to speak to the motion? Okay, I'll just add my, yes, Councillor Adam. Oh, th thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, I'll just add that, um, thank you, Councillor Hazelman, for your uh, kind words. And yes, I was the uh, Charter Champion quite a few years back. Um, and obviously, Councillor uh, Keith has done a great role uh, since then as well. It, it's a bit unfortunate we've got such a great committee here, uh, uh, obviously advising council about uh, uh, issues um, that affect our female um, community members. However, this election that's coming up, I think the fact that the state government did not actually defer it has really placed most women in, a, in an unfortunate situation. It's quite a large disadvantage. I mean, because of the COVID crisis, because of the fact that a lot of women actually do bear most of the uh, role in, in uh, bringing up children and, and now homeschooling, it really has had an impact on the amount of female candidates that have made themselves available. I know that's not directly related to this. It's unfortunate because this committee actually is a great breeding ground for that type of person to take on those roles. And I thought this, uh, this coming election would have a lot more women running, but uh, COVID has unfortunately uh, impacted that as well. So uh, I suppose I'm saying I really felt the election should have been deferred to give women a, a better chance at this. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. So having said that, the committee will just go on and become stronger and better. And hopefully in the next three or four years, uh, we can have a lot more women being candidates in the next election. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Adam. And I would just like to add um, uh, my uh, few words, uh, saying that, first of all, thank you, Councillor Hazelman, for recognising the role of Charter Champions on this committee in this uh, term, including Councillor O'Keefe and Councillor Adam and, and myself. Uh, yes, uh, this committee uh, has really raised its profile. Uh, myself, I joined this committee as a member and then stepped up uh, and due to the confidence and all the support um, uh, from the members of this committee, 
uh, I uh, decided to uh, do other, uh, to take up other bigger roles. And uh, it clearly shows that the committee is, a, is um, a very strong platform for women who want to uh, come out of their comfort zone and uh, step up uh, to other leadership roles. I would also like to um, thank uh, the members, outgoing members, Fatmata, Zubeda, and Susanna Wallace for their significant, <coughs> significant contributions, having worked, having worked worked with these members uh, during my time uh, on the committee. Um, I, I can um, confirm that these women were very passionate about the committee's role and they have put enormous effort into this committee. So thank you and well done. And welcome to all the new members, including um, Samantha Spinks, Simone Masters, Catherine Maddox, Olga Novak. Welcome to the advisory committee. So thank you very much. Uh, with that, we will now go to the vote. Can I Those... speak? I'd like to speak. Sorry, Councillor Summer, did I miss you? I thought everybody had spoken. Do you want to speak to the motion? Your voice is cutting off, right? Councillor Summer, your voice is cutting off. Do you want to repeat? Yeah, it's not a good three? reception. Yes, um, I'll plug it back in. I don't know if that's going to um, Sorry, you can't hear. we can't hear you clearly. Your voice is cutting off. I don't know. Okay. If... Speak, see? No. Uh, sorry, no? We can't, no, we can't hear you uh, clearly. So... Do you want to move to some other area where you, your uh, connectivity is better? No, shall we just resume? Okay, sorry, uh, Councillor Samo, uh, it's not working she's and you, she, she's frozen. Uh, her image is frozen. That was a good film, Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Councillor Summer, we uh, have to. No, I don't know. No, we can't hear you. Yeah, All back. right, now that's better. Do you want to start? We can see you now clearly. Mm. Yeah, I think there's some. Frozen too. Yeah, it was a good film too. too. I think we'll just carry on. Yeah. Yeah. Just... I got Maybe you charge your plug your charger okay. in front. Sometimes if it's plugged in, can you hear me properly now? It's cutting out. Uh, it's better now. I can't see or hear anyone, but can you hear me? Like, yes, that's yes. yes. better. Yes. We can hear you. Because I've forgotten what I was going to We can't I mean, um, well, I was going to mention can't hear me. Well, I can't help that. I'm sorry. I don't know. I think we've just lost another councillor, Madam Mayor. You've all got one. Yeah. Yeah. He's back. There he has gone. Yeah, he's back. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think we, uh, we just yeah, need to... We, we can yeah. allow time to uh, fix the uh, link. Minutes, uh, and we can convert to an audio link if yeah. uh, Councillor Summer wishes just to go to an audio link. Um, and that works better. We can do that. So if you... Do we adjourn for 10 minutes? No. no, no, no we just just... Can. Because she's in, uh, Councillor Summer is in the middle of her uh, uh, yeah. commentary. <laughs> yeah, if so if she can convert to audio okay. uh, somehow, um, we can continue. Madam Mayor, can we, can we just attempt one more time? It looks as if it's, it's come back into operation. Can you keep going, Fern? Can we hear? Can you try? How many am I holding up? Can you hear me? No, not clearly. Can you see me? Yeah. If, if she turns off her video, that often yeah. improves. That will help. Yeah. Do you want to go, go to only audio and switch off your video? Like that? Can you hear me now? That's yes. Better. Yes. Good stuff. That's better. Oh, so much build up, and I probably don't have 
an amazing amount of things to say now. Oh, God. Okay. Get on with it before it goes. <laughs> Let's get to the point before it breaks down again. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you. Make some big comments. Yeah, it's a great committee. When I first started my first term, that was one of the very first committees I sat on, and that was for two years. It has a remarkably long name and a remarkable long list of achievements. Um, I do want to mention this idea that perhaps females are disadvantaged at an election. That has never, ever been the case. There's always been a lesser amount of women who put their hand up to stand, and that's for a variety of complex reasons. But generally, we keep getting elected. We've got a lovely um, balance between councillors at the moment, and there's a huge visual presence of female candidates out in the community. So I'd like to think that the Women's Charter had a bit of a hand in that. And um, whether you're a mum with domestic duties, I had three young, very young children when I was first elected and I feel like I was a better mum because of this role. So please don't be discouraged. Um, we don't know whether postponing the election would have put more hands in the air of women, women candidates and I seriously doubt that would have been the case. Um, let's just look at the positives and focus on the achievements and the leadership capabilities of women moving forward and wish them all the best, really, because that's the charter, um, that's the charter mantra. Is, yeah, it's, it's not about trying to see why women can't achieve. It's about trying to help them and finding out reasons why they can. Okay, thank you, Councillor Summer. Uh, with that, thank you for your comments. Um, would any councillor like to speak to the motion? Just checking one last time. <laughs> All right, so we'll now go to the vote. Those in favor? My hand's in the air. <laughs> Can we see Alleg it? Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> Hang on. I okay, and you are in favor? Yes, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Thanks very much. So motion carried uh, unopposed. All right, moving on to item number 9.3, Safer City Camera Network Policy. There's a recommendation on page 35. Um, yes, Councillor Oswari, do you want to move, and move this motion? Thank you, Madam Mayor, for the opportunity. I'd like to move the recommendation that the Council adopt the Safer City Network Policy. Okay, thank you. And do I have a seconder? Councillor Giovanetti. You're on mute. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to uh, second that motion of Councillor Oswari. Thank you very much, Councillor Oswari. Would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, for the opportunity once again. Uh, this is a rather, uh, to me, a pretty valuable uh, policy, but also the, the, the policy that it uh, surrounds the infrastructure that's currently in place. I remember when uh, just before my first term commenced in 2012, the policy uh, adopted, this, the council adopted the Safer City Strategy uh, for the Central Business District of Greater Shepparton, uh, for Shepparton and the Victoria Park Lake Precinct. And then in 2012, when I was elected, the council received funding from the Department of Justice and uh, it has uh, subsequently come into fruition over a long period of time. And here we are eight years later in 2020, and we're getting additional cameras in place. The uh, policy is very important because it sets up a framework of how the Safer City cameras operate. Uh, it is a very important policy because it provides the community and also law enforcement with real time video footage uh, in terms of being able to prevent, uh, detect and prevent uh, criminal activity and also gives the community a measure of security moving around within the Central Business District and also the Victoria Park uh, Lake Precinct. So I think in terms of the policy itself, I think uh, it's very important uh, to have a policy like this in place for tour in terms of risk management and all the things that make sure that the policy, the cameras network is run in the proper way. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Oswari. Councillor Giovanetti, would you like to speak to the motion? I can't say much more than what Councillor Orisbar has already mentioned, Madam Mayor, apart from the fact that there will be an additional piece going into Shepparton, which I believe are most needed. I can only uh, suggest to all of our 
uh, as uh, Councillor Orozvari calls them, celebrities, um, that on the various occasions that I go into the police station, I happen to uh, sit in the uh, muster room there. Uh, you can quite plainly see pretty much everything that's happening in uh, the, uh, the CBD of Shepparton. And uh, really, it, it's, uh, it's excellent. And uh, the work that uh, Councillor Orozvari put into this in the early stages, I think, needs to be commended. Thank you, Councillor Giovanetti. Would any councillor like to speak against the motion? Would any councillor like to speak for the motion? Yes, Councillor Hazelman. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, I think like a lot of people, when the, the, the camera network was first suggested, um, I was a little bit sceptical about the value of it. Um, and at the time we saw um, presentations from Victoria Police of presentations that indicated um, how camera networks operated overseas. And a lot of that was some fairly graphic footage, particularly stuff coming out of um, Glasgow in, in Scotland. And so uh, the, the council sought the funding to get the, the network installed. And I'd have to agree with Councillor Giovanetti. Um, it's quite a, an experience to sit there in front of the, the, the screens in the police station and see the, the clarity of vision and the detail that's available on it. Um, and so my scepticism was was soon overturned to be an enthusiastic supporter. I think this is uh, marvellous. And the more and more that we can extend the network, um, admittedly in, in places overseas, they have, um, they have outsourced the monitoring of the cameras, um, notably in Scotland. Um, a disability network operated the cameras in, uh, in Glasgow and they had become quite adept at being able to identify issues before they actually emerged. We were able to have police on the, on the spot. We're clearly not at that level of sophistication yet, but that's something I think that we could aspire to, to how we make the cameras work better for us and make sure that they do as they are intended to make our city safer. Thank you, Councillor Hesseman. Would anyone else like to speak to the motion? Yes, Councillor Sum. Thank you. Uh, this is one of the better initiatives to come from the council before my time. And we had the pleasure of rolling it out and going through this policy in great detail. So I stand by the policy. I think it's, it abides by all the privacy laws and um, collaboration with Vic, Vic Pol. Uh, what I would like is for us to consider extending, extending the network into places like Marutna, because it has come to my attention. There's, there's high crime rates in places that aren't just Shepparton and there are community members calling for it. So I'm not sure if this is listed as part of the Marupna Committee's um, uh, aspirational goals, but perhaps there should be some kind of conversation about extending it out to Marupna as well. So, yeah, uh, I think it's a good policy. Um, I think it's a great system and hopefully it's achieving what it's meant to be achieving. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Would any councillor like to speak to the motion? All right, so we'll now go to the vote. Those in favor? Motion carried unopposed. Okay, so next one is item 9.4, Greater Shepherd and Best Start Early Years Plan 2020-2025. There's a recommendation on page 40. Would any councillor like to move a motion? Councillor Summer? I'll move the motion as printed, please, Madam Mayor. Thank you. And do I have a seconder? Councillor O'Keefe? Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thanks. Councillor Sum, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, yes, thank you. This is one area of our council plan that has all the green traffic lights. Uh, the team do a fantastic job in trying to ensure that the next generation are not disadvantaged by things out of their control. So in terms of public health, they do an amazing job. This is a um, Actually, I won't even harp on it. I, I've said all this before. I think we should be very proud of our team and um, I support the motion. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Councillor O'Keefe, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd just like to say, um, you know, we do have statistics that, you know, early naught to six is, is really an area of, you know, disadvantage at the moment as far as learning. So there's a lot of conversations and how that can be improved across our municipality, I'm sure across the state and across the country. 
Um, it's acknowledged that they are, they are the most important, one of the most important times within an infant's life of learning. So it's really great to see the collaborative approach. I've also spoken to some external organisations in regard to this document, and it's really pleasing to see that we are open to all of that coming together and really working hard as a community and as an organisation to have such a strategic document that is going to give us a pathway that we can also work with others on. And it's a moving document as well. I mean, obviously, these things are happening all the time. There's always you know, opportunities of improvement. We're seeing different ways of learning right now for people at home. So I think you know this is such an important document and such an important part of the organisation that we need to continue to support, which we do, but work together with and constantly you know, work to improve it. Thank you, Councillor King. Would any councillor like to speak against the motion? Would any councillor like to speak for the motion? Yes, Councillor Sutton. You're on mute, Councillor Sutton. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to speak to the motion. Um, this is a six year plan that has the objective of raising a po profile of early childhood locally and the investment in their early years. The new plan has five key themes, play, learn, thrive, voice and share, with measures of success to determine these achievements. Previous Best Start Early Years has seen increases in many areas, including stage visits um, by maternal and child health staff, enrolments in early start to kindergarten, increasing in breastfeeding rates, and has um, links with uh, local agencies and organisations. And I look forward to more progress in the 2020-2025 plan to continue to improve outcomes for our children and their families. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Sutton. Would any councillor like to speak to the motion? Okay, so we'll now go to the vote. Those in favour? Motion carried unopposed. Thank you. Next is item 9.5, Greater Shepparton Sports Hall of Fame Advisory Committee, appointment of committee members, uh, committee member. Uh, there's a recommendation on page 47, and Councillor Giovanetti, do you want to move? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I would like to move the recommendation on page 47. It states that Council appoint Peter Holland as a community member representative to the Greater Shepparton Sports Hall of Fame Advisory Committee, commencing 16 September and concluding 18th of March 2022. Thank you very much, Councillor Giovanetti. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Adam? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll second that motion. Thank you. Councillor Giovanetti, would you like to speak to the motion? Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. This came about um, because of the um, requirement to advertise to community representatives to be on this committee. Um, we did have three people nominate, um, mainly Daryl Butcher, Don Kilgow and Margot um, Koskalainen. Um, and, but we were still two members short. Uh, we did re-advertise uh, in uh, January and didn't receive any further uh, expressions of interest. Peter Holland uh, then put his name up uh, and expressed an interest. Um, and the advisory, um, sport, I'm sorry, the Sports Advisory Hall of Fame Committee were, were pleased with his nomination. And thanks to Councillor Patterson who, uh, uh, shall we say, um, persuaded the CEO to to allow Mr Holland to be appointed to the committee and I think he will be an excellent uh, committee member. Thank you, Councillor Giovanetti. Um, Councillor Adam, do you want to speak to the motion? No, look, I think Councillor Giovanetti stepped through that beautifully. Thank you, Bruce. <laughs> Thank you. And would any councillor like to speak against the motion? Would any councillor like to speak for the motion? All right, so we'll now go to the vote. Those in favour? Motion carried unopposed. All right, so we are now moving on to our um, infrastructure directorate, item 10.1, place space strategy 2020-2030. There's a recommendation on page 51. Would any councillor like to move a motion? Councillor Summer, is that your hand? <laughs> I'll move it as printed. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And do I have a seconder? 
Councillor O'Keefe. I'm happy to second that. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor uh, Summer. Do you want to speak to the motion? I, we've got this place-based strategy and we're sending it out to the public for consultation. I do hope everybody gets involved, has a read. 30% uh, of our population are young families. So that's a reason why we need women in families to be represented on council so that we can have input into these things. Um, perhaps um, shade sales is important and should be, should be over all the new play, group, play equipment. Um, have a suggestion, should, should it be fenced just for safety reasons? But we really need the um, primary caregiver's perspective on what they think will be a safe and fun option for their kids. Uh, what I'd really like to see come from this is a 10 year capital plan that goes back and retrospectively outfits all of our existing playgrounds because many of them, when it gets to over 30 degree heat, there's no shade and it's all made of iron. Some of our playgrounds don't even have stairs that are navigable but for small children to get up to the top where they can use the slide. So some kind of consistency on the playgrounds that we already have, if there was some capital fund or renewal funding put aside for that, I think we'd be um, a lot more accommodating to that 30% of people who have young children. So we'll take it out to the public and see what comes back. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Councillor O'Keefe, would you like to speak to the motion? Oh, just briefly, Madam Mayor, we do hear often actually from residents in regard to the playground space. And so this is the time and opportunity that we do put that call out to make sure that they are giving their feedback and putting their hand up to what they would like to see happen, because that's the only way we know what needs to be done. So I think going out to draft is really important. Council needs to ensure that we are reaching the community that, so that they are aware that this is out um, for as a draft and for their feedback. So that's, that's probably the important thing, making sure we get to the right voices so that we can get that return feedback from the draft. Thank you very much, Councillor O'Keefe. Would any councillor like to speak against the motion? Would any councillor like to speak for the motion? Okay, we'll now go to the vote. Those in favor? Motion carried unopposed. Thank you. Next is item 10.2, signing of council leases. There's a recommendation on page 55. Do I have a mover? Councillor Giovanetti. Uh, thanks, Madam Mayor. Uh, I would like to move the recommendation on page 55 um, as it's printed. Thank you. And do I have a seconder? Councillor Adam. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll second that motion. Thanks. Councillor Giovanetti, would you like to speak to the motion? Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. This is for the uh, signing of leases for um, hangers out at the uh, Shepparton Aerodrome. Uh, the leases on these uh, particular um, sheds, I suppose you'd call them, um, expired on the 30th of June, and this lease will commence from the uh, 1st of July 2020 and expire on the 30th of June 2030. Uh, expected income from the, uh, from the lease payments for these buildings uh, relates to about $22,000 per annum uh, going back into council. Uh, these uh, hangers have been leased for some time, obviously by the, the people who currently have them, and we're just uh, following through on uh, an existing arrangement. Thank you very much, Councillor Giovanetti. Councillor Adam, do you want to speak to the motion? Yes, thank you, Madam. Just to add that uh, um, <coughs> the the proposed renewal of these lease agreements has undergone a public consultation process in accordance with section 223 of the Local Government Act 1989. So at that time when we went through this, the old act applied, just so people can be confident knowing that uh, the correct process is in place to renew all these leases. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Uh Would any councillor like to speak against the motion? Would anyone like to speak for the motion? Okay, so we'll now go to the vote. Those in favour? Motion carried unopposed. And the next is item 10.3, contract 2070 Wyndham Street, Fitzjohn Street intersection upgrade works. There's a recommendation on page 58. Do I have a move on? Councillor Oresvari. Thank you, Madam Mayor, for the opportunity. I'd like to move the recommendation on whatever the page, 58, page 58, items one and two, I'll read them. 
Item one, accept the tender submitted by Apex Earthworks Proprietary Limited for contract number 2070, construction of Wyndham Fitzjohn Street upgrade works for the lump sum price of $3,156,979.65, including GST, and two authorised chief executive executive officer to sign and seal the contract documents. Thank you, Councillor Oroswari. Do I have a second? Second, jo Councillor Giovanetti. Yes, thank you. I'd like to second the yeah, recommendation of the eight. Okay, thank you, Councillor Oroswari. Do you want to speak to the motion? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, uh, just looking at the executive summary, in broader terms, this is another example of where council dollars go. It's uh, infrastructure. Infra infrastructure costs a lot of money to build uh, and more importantly to maintain. Uh, this is for the upgrading of Wyndham and Fitzjohn Street intersection, Wyndham, McIntosh Street for the signals and Wyndham Street road widening works at that location. And the value of the contract as stated and the successful uh, ap applicant was Apex Earthworks. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Councillor Giovanetti, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, the only other thing I'd add, Madam Mayor, is that we are hopeful to obtain uh, some form of state government funding for this project. And uh, we'll hopefully we'll hear um, regarding that in the not too distant future. Thank you, Councillor Giovanetti. Would any councillor like to speak against the motion? Would anyone like to speak for the motion? Yes, Councillor Hazelman. Yes, thank you. It's just, um, there's always a point of confusion about these types of contracts being awarded when the, um, the, the council report has a, has a budgeted figure excluding GST, and yet the, the recommendation and the adopted price is inclusive of GST. Um, it just creates that level of confusion that you've got to read the report and do your own sums to calculate what the GST component was. Okay, thank you, Councillor Hazelman. And uh, would any councillor like to speak to the motion? Councillor O'Keefe? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I just think it's worth noting that this is a local contractor, which is important. Uh, they're from Kingapna, um, and they have relevant experience, obviously, um, doing projects with council before. And they also were the lowest price local tender as well. So that's a, a positive for the project when we get to it. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak to the motion? All right, so we'll now go to the vote. Those in favour? Councillor Fern. Summer? Yeah, okay. Motion carried on opposed. <clears throat> Moving on to next agenda item, it's 10.4, contract 2033, construction of Mott Street, upgrade Bond Street to High Street. There's a recommendation on page 62. Do I have a mover? Councillor Giovanetti. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Uh, I'd like to move the motion on uh, recommendation, sorry, on page 62, which states that uh, Council accept the tender submitted by Jarvis Delahaye Contractors Proprietary Limited, contract number 2033, construction of Maud Street upgrade, Vaughan Street to High Street for the lump sum of $3,498,456.52. Again, like Councillor Hazelman said, including GST, and authorise the CEO to sign and seal the contract documents. Thank you very much, Councillor Giovanetti. Do I have a second? Councillor O'Keefe? Happy to second that. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Giovanetti, do you want to speak to the motion? Yes, Madam Mayor, just briefly, this uh, relates to the finalisation of works in the Maud Street uh, redevelopment. Um, these works, uh, once completed, they will... Um, uh, allow uh, the buses to um, go through to the new bus station or bus, uh, what do you call it, drop off point in Maud Street. Um, it's great to see again another local contractor getting a job, young Nathan Delahaye from Young Merch Boy. So he's done very well for himself. So it's great that he's uh, picking up some work. Um, it's interesting to note that the uh, budget for the, pro for the project was estimated at $4,119,000. Works are coming in at about 3.5 million. So, sorry, I'll muck that up. Uh, project is 4.119 million, and the um, contract price is 3.498 million. So, 
there's a saving now on budget of about uh, roughly seven hundred thousand dollars. So that's a very good outcome for council. Thank you very much, Councillor Giovanetti. Councillor O'Keefe, do you want to speak to the motion? Thank you, Madam Mayor. It's actually an exciting project and it will be really great to see that whole precinct finished up that end at least. We know the North Street Mall is another project heading into the future, but it's going to be a significant upgrade when we think that the fire brigade is actually moving out of there, the CFA are moving out of there. Um, we'll have more parking. It's going to be much more pleasant, you know, a much more pleasant experience coming into that area. So I'm really excited to see this finished. Obviously, we're a bit, you know, half of the projects done with the bus exchange sitting there waiting. And there has been lots of comments and questions in regard to why can't the buses now start using that facility. But unfortunately, due to the roundabout and these works, there is some delay for that to happen. So time frame, I think we're hoping to, you know, really have this up and moving within 2021 around March. Um, let's hope that the, the works get done fairly quickly so that we can, you know, see some, some positive change. And starting to use that bus interchange is really important to start, you know, using that fantastic facility. So it's going to look fabulous when it's all done. More parking, beautiful streetscape. It's going to be magnificent. So lots of positive things happening within the CBD. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Would any councillor like to speak against the motion? All right. Would any councillor like to speak for the motion? Yes, Councillor Summer. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Can you, I hope you can hear me because I don't have a lot of battery. Um, very excited about this project, been waiting a really long time. It's such a big project, we've had to split it into stages. So it was supposed to be all done at once and the buses were supposed to be operational immediately once the works were done. But we split it just to try and get it into our own budget because all our budget bids for funding fell through. This is a very significant um, opportunity for our CBD. We've seen the Vaughan Street redevelopment in stage two really spark up that area and dramatically change the amenity from anything we could have, um, anything that existed before. And hopefully this will be along the same vein because that road leads directly to the mall. So there's an argument that the mall itself is the heart and the mall, the, the heart isn't dead. It's just that these trees around the outside don't feed into it properly. So if we get this right, we'll get all of these pedestrians out in the Vaughan Street Kmart area, walking down this pleasant vista into the mall and enjoy themselves, slow down, shop a bit and all the rest. So I have a feeling this is going to be significant for our CBD and it's been a long time coming. So I wholeheartedly support this one. Thank you very much, Councillor Summer. Would any councillor like to speak to the motion? Yes, Councillor Sutton. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just a, just a quick word, just to say that the contract includes a direction that works out to be undertaken during December to mitigate the impact on local traders during the Christmas period. So I think that's a really good um, thing because we all know what, what's been happening with COVID-19 and if they had something else to impact their businesses, it wouldn't be good. But this is um, going to be structured in such a way that they will be able to have their Christmas trade without impact. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sutton. Uh, would anyone else like to speak to the motion? All right, so we'll now go to the vote. Those in favour? Motion carried unopposed. Thank you. And now the next item is 10.5, approval of variation, contract 2073, Watt Road Bridge Repairs. And there's a recommendation on page 67. Um, would a councillor like to move a motion? Councillor Sutton? Yeah. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to move a motion that the council authorise payment of contract variation number one under contract 2073, Watt Road Bridge repairs with a value of $47,305.50, including GST. Thank you very much. And uh, seconder, please. Councillor Adam. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll second that motion. Thank you. Councillor Sutton, do you want to speak to the motion? Uh, yes, I will just just quickly. Um, this this variation happened because once they moved the um, the concrete works off the bridge, they found that there needed to be more work done that they had previously thought. 
So to make the bridge safe, they had to spend a bit more money, which we're all very pleased about. So um, got no hesitation in approving that application. Thank you very much, Councillor Sutton. And Councillor Adam, do you want to speak to the motion? Yes, just briefly, Madam Mayor. As Councillor Sutton uh, explained, once they removed the asphalt off the surface of the bridge, then they really saw what the what the damage was and what needed to be undertaken. The works. Now, one could say, well, why wasn't the asphalt taken off at the beginning to get a better understanding? Well, that would have cost probably more than what's being charged now. So it, for this one, uh, we don't like uh, variations that cost us more, but this one has a, has a definite justifiable reason for it. They're, they're the circumstances. You win some, you lose some. At least this one isn't a real lot of money. So, uh, yep, I support this variation, definitely. Thank you very much. Uh, would any councillor want, uh, want to speak against the motion? No? Would anyone like to speak for the motion? Yes, Councillor Hazelman? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, over the journey, I think the council has spent every couple of years a substantial amount of money doing a similar sort of process in, uh, in keeping this bridge going. And if you probably tell a similar story about the Talamba Bridge as well. And um, I stand to be correct, but I think both have got some heritage implications to them, which probably means you know, the old fashioned idea of bowl them over and put a brand new bridge in is probably not a practical resolution to it, but it's gonna be a headache for councils going forward. The increase in traffic on Watts Road grows and grows each year. Now, at some point, we're gonna to have to come to a conclusion that maybe the actual performance of this bridge doesn't meet the expectations and requirements and that maybe then there needs to be some serious discussion with state government about some serious funding to replace the bridge. Retain it as a uh, as a walkway, a walking bridge or whatever, but I think we're going to be in um, serious financial issues on this bridge for years to come. Thank you, Councillor Hazelman. Uh, does anyone else want to speak to the motion? Yes, Councillor Summer. Do you say Summer? Summer, Councillor Summer. Yes. Okay, <laughs> thanks. 100% agree that it's going to be an impost on future councils. These bridges have been nearing the end of their useful life for a very long time. Generally, we'd be going to the RDV Victoria to ask for funding grants. Uh, I think we might have used up all our favours in the new art gallery. So hopefully we can really start advocating because it's true. <laughs> so for bridge, and yes, there's a heritage problem. The problem with the heritage has been discussed many times. And I think the solution was having a brand new bridge but keeping the old one. So it's going to be very costly. These are huge infrastructure projects that we've left as a legacy for future councils. And um, yeah, I um, don't think anybody's looking forward to trying and figure out, figuring out the answer, but so long as we can advocate heavily and get some funding, we can do more than just a Band-Aid fix because at the moment, it's just a money pit. We're just Band-Aid, Band-Aid, Band-Aid. We'd be saving a lot more if we can just get those capital works done. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Uh, would any Councillor want to speak to the motion? All right, okay, so now we'll now go to the vote. Those in favor? Motion carried unopposed. Okay, then item 11, Sustainable Development Directorate is uh, in receipt. Item 12, Documents for signing and sealing 12.1 Greater Valley Calisthenics funding deed. Uh, there's a recommendation on page 71. Do I have a mover for this recommendation? Yes, Councillor Adam. Uh, this is item 12.1. Am I correct, Madam Mayor? That's right. Yes, I'll move the uh, recommendation as the motion. I'll read it out, it's not very long. Mm -hmm. But the Council authorised the Chief Executive Officer to sign and seal a funding deed of agreement for the relocation of the Greater Valley Calisthenics Club Incorporated. Thank you very much. And do I have a seconder? Councillor Oraswari? Thanks, you, ma thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to move the recommendation. I second, the, second the recommendation as put by Councillor Adam. Thank you. And Councillor Adam, do you want to speak to the motion? 
Yes, thanks, Madam Mayor. We're the, we're the middleman in this process. Uh, obviously, the calisthenics group were in operation at the uh, old hall at the new uh, CFA site. They've obviously had to move out, and they will move out. And uh, as part of the relocation, which incidentally is being uh, funded by the CFA, uh, we have to uh, sign this funding deed agreement for this to happen. So that's it's almost a procedural motion to a degree. Thank you, Councillor Adam. Councillor Orzvari, do you want to speak to the motion? No, thanks, Madam Mayor. Would any councillor like to speak against the motion? Would anyone like to speak for the motion? Okay, so we'll now go to the vote. Those in favour? Motion carried unopposed. Right, moving on to page 72 of the agenda, item 13, confidential management reports, 13.1, designation of confidentiality of information. There's a recommendation on page 72. Do I have a mover? Uh, Madam Mayor, I, I should have um, declared an interest in this one. We are not, we, we are just, a, okay. So We're just you, closing the meeting first. Uh, we are closing the meeting so, first, yeah. You, yeah. Can I can somebody please move this motion about closing the meeting for confidential items? Sure. Yes, Councillor Adam. Yes, I'll uh, move the recommendation on page uh, whatever it is, Madam Mayor. I can't see it on my screen here. That pursuant to section 89.2D of the Local Government Act 1989, resolve that the council meeting be closed to members of the public for consideration of a confidential item. Okay, thank you. Do I have a, a second? Councillor Giovanetti. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm happy to second that motion. Okay, Councillor Adam, do you want to speak to the motion? No, it's quite plain. Yeah, simple. and Councillor, thank you very much. And Councillor Giovanetti, do you want to speak to? I you? agree, Councillor Adam. Thank you, um, Councillor Hazelman. Oh, okay, we no. are all going. For... He's voting. No, I'm voting. <laughs> voting. Are you okay? We'll now, we'll now know. We'll now go to the vote. Those in favour. Thank you. So motion carried. So just for the for our viewers, uh, we are now um, uh, stopping our live stream to discuss this confidential item. Once we have discussed that, we will be back and the live stream will resume. So at this point, our live, st live stream, our Facebook live stream is going to end. Thank you. We're live. Thank you, Carly. So uh, we have resumed our live streaming and we are now referring to item 13.4 of the agenda, which is on page 72, designation of confidentiality of information report attachments. There's a recommendation on page 72. I need a mover for this motion. Do I have a mover? Councillor Giovanetti. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll move the recommendation on page 72 as it's printed. Thank you. And a second, please. Councillor Orasvari, thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I second the recommendation as put by Councillor Giovanetti. Thank you. Councillor Giovanetti, do you want to speak to the motion? Uh, no, not necessarily. Thank you, Madam Mayor. It's just procedural. And Councillor Orasvari, do you want to speak to the motion? Nor I, thank you, Madam Mayor. Does anyone want to, thank you. Does anyone want to speak against the motion? All right, does anyone want to speak for the motion? No, we'll now go to the vote. Those in favor? Speaking. Motion carried unopposed. Okay. Council okay, if I, your, your hands were up. Yeah. 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 So all in favor, motion carried unopposed. Thank you. With that, we now move on to item 14.1, councillor activities. Um, there is a recommendation on page 73. Item 14.1.1, Councillor Activities, August 2020. We have a mover, Councillor Adam. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll move the motion that the summary of the Council's community interaction and briefing program be received and record. Thank record. you. And On record of assemblies of councils be noted, sorry. Thank you very much. And do I have a mover? I wasn't second. moving. Sorry, was um, uh, my apologies. Uh, do I have a second? <laughs> Councillor Sutton, thank you. So, Councillor Adam, do you want to speak to the motion? Yeah, again, just briefly, Madam Mayor. Obviously, uh, this list has been fairly uh, limited over the past five to six months. 
Oh, wait, it looks a little bit larger this time, a bit, bit bigger. I mean, uh, there's a few things that I've attended as well. I'm sure everyone else has as well uh, via Zoom, most of them. I just hope this just grows larger and larger, this list, over the next uh, few months. Thank you, Councillor Adam. And Councillor oh. Sutton? No, thank you, Madam Mayor. But I am missing going to going out to meetings and things. Yes. Yes. I'm like looking forward to being able to. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, does anyone want to speak against the motion? Would any councillor like to speak for the motion? Okay, we now go to the vote. Those in favour? Councillor Rizwari, I can't see your hand. Now I can. <laughs> and councillor Senate. Okay, we are all in favour. Motion carried unopposed. Um, moving on to item 14.2, council committee reports, nil received. 14.3, notice of motion amendment or decision, nil received. Item 15, urgent business not included on the agenda, nil. And item 16, close of meeting. So with this, I declare this meeting close as 36 past seven. Thank you very much for your participation tonight and have a lovely evening, rest of the evening and stay safe. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, everyone.